don't be afraid to make something terrible. Uh, if, if you give yourself permission to make something terrible, then you can make anything. And I love that. You know, maybe make the worst painting you've ever seen in your life. And then you'll probably make something original. So here we're making the, the, I wasn't even trying to make the worst drawing that I ever made. I wasn't even trying to make a dog. I just started with scribbling. <laughs> So I'm going to start with scribbling again, but I'm going to start with this format here. And I'm going to use my right triangle to plop another square, another rectangle, onto my paper. And why do I do this? Well, for one thing, can you all see that I'm actually connecting to the paper right now? And one of the things that's nice about that is that I'm not staring at a blank piece of paper. I'm actually making a fast triangle here. Could, it could not be perfect, people. I just want to make sure you know that this could not be perfect. Ah, better to have a drawing than no drawing. So let's draw. It's the act of drawing that is extremely good for us. Very, very good for us. So now my paper is no longer vast and undefined. It's now come into that size that's about the size of my hand. So we can just start to think with our pencil. Think with your pencil. That is, that is a Margaret term. Think with your pencil. Begin to think with your pencil. And if you don't want to think here with your pencil, you can always, you know, because now this is precious and I'm going to draw in it and all this kind of stuff, you can always think with your pencil on some other paper, but you just want to just doodle around and not try to make anything, but let your pencil move. Wonder with your pencil. Wander with your pencil. What you want to have happen is you want to have something going so that you are moving, moving, and when you're moving with a pencil in your hand, you're actually drawing. And whether anything comes of it or not is not that big of a deal. Uh, all of us need to get out of our outcome mode and into our incoming inspiration or ongoing drawing. The more that we draw without thinking, then the more that we draw. You can think anytime you want, but don't stop yourself because you don't know what you're going to draw. So I don't know what I'm going to draw either. I just drew this dog. And I'm also encouraging right now drawing with scribbling. And I'm also um, maybe going to change my direction right here. Um, I don't know if that's going to work out. Can you still see the whole the whole thing. So now I went from being horizontal to being vertical and that's going to make it for me a, a possibility of fitting something on the paper a little bit differently. And you can see how I'm just scribbling things up, scribbling it up. Uh, no idea here. Oh my gosh. <laughs> It's like looking at clouds. It's like having some fun pretending that you're going to uh, actually uh, just scribble till you see something, you know, and then when you see it, you know, don't stop yourself and say, oh, I could never, whatever, draw what I'm seeing. But uh, in my drawing, you know, like all of a sudden something starts to come out of the drawing and you're just there to play around with it, you know, really just to just to play around with that. I'm drawing more and more and softer and softer right now than, um, than I had been with the last drawing. The last drawing I was doing a lot of making just some definite marks, just some places around making some definite, definite marks and playing around with that. And I, I enjoyed it a lot. I don't think I've really ever quite drawn like that. And that's, that's a big deal is to kind of 
not necessarily on purpose, initiate different ways of drawing, but, um, but initiate, start, do something. And of course, if I wanted to light my brain up even more, I might use a colored pencil or something right now. I might do all this in yellow. Just get out my yellow and start to play around with yellow. And then I, that's like drawing lightly because yellow is always going to come out light, especially if you don't press. And as usual, I'm going to be talking to you and showing you this way of holding the pencil way back so you can see everything I'm drawing. Just even if I turn it around, I'm still going to hold the pencil lightly and back from the back of it, back on the back of it, of the pencil. And I can play around with this. Oh my gosh, I'm not sure. Maybe I, when I get this upside down, I see something else that I could also do here that would, was a little unexpected. I'm going to start to let the muse inside of me start to play around with something. And I may not have actually enough room on this particular piece of paper to do this. Um, that's one thing that's nice about this. I drew it a little bit dark, this format, this box and so forth. But if I wanted to, I could take my eraser and let's say I wanted more room down here now. Um, now that I'm down here, maybe I want to pull this off of here and then I'm going to be able to extend out what I'm doing and actually maybe have enough room for what I'm thinking that I want to do here. And I can always take my right triangle, which doubles as a straight edge, and just take, take this down a little further. Um, not sure how far I want to take it yet, so I don't think I want to cut it off. But I am going to put the little rails on, just because that will help me gauge it. A lot of this is not thinking. It's just based on doing. And so you want to be aware of every, every component, every part of it that, that might have anything to do with it. So um, I, want, uh, I want to put these, if I know there's going to be verticals, I want there to be verticals. If I know I'm going to go past here, I want to erase that. And then I'm not sure what I want to do here. This is so funny. I think, I've, I think I'm interested in making things that are humorous and uh, we all have different things that we would be doing, some things being more serious and some things being more humorous. But this is definitely what I have in mind here and it is in mind now but it didn't come from my mind because I can assure you that I was not thinking of making a dancing bird a little while ago that had bird feathers and bird beak and knees <laughs> and I can't decide yet if the bird I think the bird is going to uh, be wearing some high heels I'm pretty sure because these are more less bird legs and more uh, human legs now this is what I've been playing around with in my mind as I saw this how soon did you see it did you did you see it before I saw it I just wanted to play around uh, here, never sure getting all this, you know, making it look like this bird or these legs have weight on them. Um, I'm not trying to make it perfect, um, so rest assured that that's not going to probably happen here. But let me move over here so you can maybe see some of this that I'm that I'm doing. Uh, but I love either uh, well, I love the dancing shoes. It's one of the things that I love to do is dance. And I uh, also love to fly, um, but obviously we humans still need, unless we're dreaming, we need something to fly in. So I can just keep playing around with this and start working on my bird wings. And again, I'm pressing kind of a little bit more out on my edge there every time I bring, see, woof, woof, woof. So I started this by touching the paper continuously. And now sometimes I'm making these lines that start one place and then end. And then I pick it up. They start and they end. 
but they end with kind of a taper. See, start there, end with a taper. Start here, end with a taper. Start there, end with a taper. And be careful when you start going in dark that you don't go so dark. Uh, that's what I like about scribbling first is it gives me an idea uh, for things that I might do. And then it's fairly well started by the time um, I'm in a place to give it a little more definition. So I'm kind of starting with this whole general, general look to it, general thing happening. And then I am adding some details. So I make the form first and then I add the detail. You know, this bird, especially since it's a bird, could, could actually be flying. Maybe I won't make any contact with the earth with it. And that kind of reminds me of something. <clears throat> there was a time, I don't hear it as much anymore, but there was a time when people would say, you know, this thing isn't working because it's floating. You know, your orange is floating. You drew, drew a picture of a banana and it's floating. I think we don't need to worry about that anymore. <laughs> now that he drew this, it's so weird. I put this down here and it actually looks to me like the bird's standing on something, not on the edge of this, but just standing there. So who knows? Anyway, I love tutus. <laughs> don't know if you love tutus, but I love tutus that are flouncy and that go out when you twirl around. So my bird has a tutu and that's been a theme in some of my some of my paintings. Uh, that uh, did one piece uh, it's like a ballerina that was underwater dancing in the water. So oh my gosh. <laughs> And don't be afraid to just like draw really lightly going back further and stuff. And then if you don't like what you just did, just come back in and pull it out. Like here now I can start to pull out parts of the tutu that would be more into the light, let's say. And um, maybe some of this can be a little lighter around where those feathers are. And maybe this got a little too little too dark there or I want to come in with a little different kind of definition oh my gosh I can see her eye now this is cracking me up completely all right so here's this eye here is the eye right in here right in here and I'm gonna just I think I'll give her an eyelid and then an eye and one of the things I could see is that she just you know, or something I wanted to play with is just that she would have eyelashes. If I don't get them just right, I'll just go ahead and leave them like that. Or uh, this is going to be a three-quarter eye over here. Or I will leave them like that or I'll go in and make it different. I can open this eye up a little bit more if I want to. Partially just by going up higher, making another lid up there. I would give her a little nostril in here. So this is something that I would continue to play with. And another thing about this is that if I really love this a lot, I could draw it over and over and I could also trace it because now that I've got it drawn and I've got somewhat of an edge coming in here, I'm kind of making that with my these lines I like to make. It's just something I like to do. And you're probably going to find out things that you like to do and they may just embarrass you totally because you're like, nobody else does that and then I do it. Well, that's some of the fun of it, that it, we all do these things differently. We all work on it differently. I just, I love, I love it when that happens. And it should happen a lot. It should happen a lot that you try things, you let things happen, you play around, just play around. And again, drawing lightly, you already know what I'm going to say, you can come in and make things change. Put a lot of light on that, on those feathers over there. Not 
sure what she should have for up here, so I think I'll just leave it out of there. This needed eraser can come in here and give you a nice little more definition to that eye if you want to take some of it out. You just knead it, bend it, so forth. I'm not sure on the shoes. I'm not going to worry about them. It, this might be something, if I were going to do a lot of it, I might even take some pictures of myself or somebody else wearing shoes and uh, kind of get in the position that I want it to be in, not to make it perfect, but just to explore how it looks in the real world. There's a lot of people that say, well, I, I can't draw out of my head. It's like nobody can until they've done what they're going to do out of their head a lot, a lot of times. And if you always draw a certain character, you're going to be good at that. If you draw characters in general and you make them up yourself, you'll be really good at making characters up out of your head. But one of the things I'm going to say is that this, this scribble method, which is not really a method, it's just scribbling, is a way to get in touch with the kind of characters that you might want to make up. All right, there is my dancing bird that I can come back in and play around with. So nice to have a drawing like this sitting around so you can just come into it sometimes and let the drawing take you someplace.